Hello, I'm Jackie and I'm back with another Girl Scouts at Home video today, Life Skills Edition for you. So today we're going to be changing the oil in my car. Um, I'm going to have the help of my cousin do it. And I am in a little town in ne Julian, Nebraska. Some of you guys might know where it's at. It's in between Nebraska and Auburn. That's where my cousins live. And I came down here to do it because this building back here, this shed of theirs, they have a car lift, so it's gonna be easier for me to videotape it and show how to change your oil. So if you're changing your oil by yourself, there's two things you have to buy every time you change your oil. And the first one is new oil. I just got mine from O'Reilly's. And then the second one you'll have to buy is a new oil filter to use each time. So let's go and see how it all happens and how we change our oil. So. First things first, I know I need an oil change because of this light that's on in my car. Um, I have a newer car, so it tells me, um, and when that light comes on, I click um, the system's buttons and it tells me maintenance required. But before I had a newer car, in high school I drove a 1997 Toyota Camry, and so I had to make sure I got an oil change um, at the right amount of times, and so what I did was I used the speedometer um, to track, I used trip A or trip B to track how many miles I've drove since I got an oil change last, since I always change my oil myself. If you go and get your oil changed by a company, they will put a little um, sticker up in your windshield and tell you when to get an oil change next. Um, sometimes when I'm in a rush and I don't have the time to do it, I will go to a company um, in Omaha and Lincoln to have them change my oil. But a good way to keep track yourself is to um, you can always put a sticker in the window yourself, or you can just use your speedometer, trip A or trip B, whichever one you want. Or if you have a newer car, the car will tell you when maintenance is required and you need an oil change. So that is how I know I need an oil change today. Okay, so the first step in getting an oil change is to raise the car up so you can go underneath it. I am at my cousin's house, like I said, so I could use the lift, which is these little red pillars. And how we raise the car up, um, we put um, these arms underneath the same spot you would put it underneath the car where you when you're changing a tire if you don't have a lift to change your oil you'll either drive it up on ramps and you'll have to slide underneath it and lay on your back to change the oil or you can jack up the car and then put it on jack stands it's your choice whatever you guys have at home so um, this is obviously the easiest because we're able to raise the car up a lot higher than if we put it on ramps or use jack stands but not everyone just has a car lift in there able to just use in their back pocket. So yeah, we will be back with the next step. Okay, so first step, after you have your car raised or you have it on the ramps, since we were underneath my car right now because we raised it up, you have to take off this oil drain pan, which is right here, and it's gonna be this nut that you're gonna take off of it. So, um, you just use a wrench to take it off. when you take it off the oil will start coming out I know it's gonna be hot yeah I should let it sit yeah we should have let the car sit a little bit um if you're doing this you usually want your car to sit we missed the pan um yeah yikes uh, I oil stain shirts don't doesn't it um, if you care about your shirt, you should not wear a nice shirt because if you get it on you, it will stain your shirt. Um, also, like what we were saying, you should let your um, car sit um, to cool down so the oil that's coming out of it is not hot. I just drove an hour to get here, so my oil is really hot as it was coming out, but it's okay. Um, and if you do, did spill on the floor like we did, oil will stain your floor. So um, either make sure you get it all in the pan, which we did not. Um, so as you can tell, we dumped a bunch of absorbent rock on the ground, but it's basically the same thing as cat litter. We'll clean it up too. So my sister's car leaks in our garage and she has a pan of like cat litter, litter underneath her car to just um, pick up the oil that leaks. But yeah, the next thing we take off is the oil filter and you have to use, um, the wrench is broke. Yeah, make sure you got a working wrench. You gotta make sure you have a working wrench, which we do not. So we're getting a new one. Um, I don't know why we keep broken wrenches, but we do. Um, so when you have a working wrench, you take off your oil filter. Um, 
At times it can be really hard um, depending on how tight your oil filter is like screwed on. There we go. Okay, so um, if your car's hot, you'd want to use a rag so you don't burn yourself on this when you um, start twisting it with your hand. There we go. Okay, and so we now have the filter out. When it's done dripping almost all the way, it's safe to put the oil pan plug back in. You just screw it with your fingers and then you'll use the wrench again to tighten it to make sure it's screwed Not all the way tight. on. But you don't want it to be too tight. It's supposed to be hand tight. Hand tight. Yeah. But yes. I, I always go a little tighter. It's hand tight, but use the wrench once to tighten it just a little bit. So now that you have your filter taken off and you've cleaned off the oil that was on it, you're going to put the new sealing ring that came in with your new filter you bought. You just put it around, push it down to the bottom. So when you screw your filter back in, it will be sealed on tight. The big one. So once you have your sealing ring put on, um, if it's hard to put on, put a little oil on it so it slides on down. Then you put the filter in it and it just pops in like that. Then once you have your filter put in, you go back to your car and you screw it in with your hand to start. And then you take the wrench once again to make sure it's tight. filter and take took out the old filter and put in the new filter you let if you're using a lift you'll lower your car back down to the ground um if you're up on a ramp you can leave it on the ramp right you can leave it on the ramp you just have to be able to reach into the hood so that's what we're doing right now is lowering the car okay so once you have lowered the car to the ground you'll pop the hood and then you have to take off this little oil cap once again, you want your car to be cooled down while you're doing this so the parts of your car are not hot when you're touching. But we didn't wait for my car to cool, so we had to use a rag to get it off. Then you set the funnel inside the hole for where the cap you just and you start pouring in your oil. Depending on your car, you might need more or less. Mine takes about four quarts. So this first one, it has like one quart left from when I did my oil last time. Um, so then we have to open up a new oil and then we'll put the rest in. Dumping in the next three. Oh, maybe we should shut off the fan because it's really low in the oil, don't you think? I don't want oil on my windshield. Look at it. We almost there? Yeah. Look at it. You let okay. that sit and you start your car. So we let that sit and settle, make sure it's all out of the funnel. And then put your cap. we'll put the cap back on. But once again, if you didn't let your car, car cool, be careful because it could be hot. Okay. Now yeah. that we have the oil filter back on, we gotta find the car key and we're gonna start the car like normal. And we just let it run for a little bit um, and then we will come back. We the car and let it run for a little bit and then we used our dipstick, which is right here, and we checked it, but there's no oil on the dipstick, so um, we need to add a little bit more oil. Um, also, if you don't know what type of oil you need, in some cars it will tell you on the cap, which is that's what it says on mine right there. So we're gonna add some more oil to it. Okay, since we added more oil, we are going to start the car again and let it run for a little bit 
So let the oil cycle through and then we'll check it again with the dipstick to see if there's oil on it this time. After you check the dipstick and you can see that there's oil um, to the second dot or in between the first and second dot, wherever your car normally has the oil reading at, then you just close the hood and you're good to go. You've changed oil. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about it or you need any explanations, just leave some comments down and we will get back to them to help you out. Um, once again, I was Jackie and this was a life skill on how to change your oil. Um, later on in the summer, we'll be doing how to change a tire and even how to check your oil too. So have a good day, everyone. Bye.